Hello, welcome to the Supreme Court Show. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be discussing the recent Supreme Court case, United States v. Zubeda, which was, uh, the opinion was issued on March 3rd, 2022. I want to very quickly discuss just my intention with these videos. Um, I'd like to paint a broad picture of the issues and arguments. However, these opinions are quite long, um, arguments are nuanced, and the writing is very specific. So it would be impossible for me to capture the entire opinion in a short video um, on YouTube. Uh, however, I'd like to, as accurately as I can, uh, discuss you know the main arguments, the main issues, and if anyone would like to read the opinions further, I will link it in the description below. So with that, let's get into the case. Um, the story here uh, was that after 9-11, uh, the attacks, the CIA believed that Abu Zubeda was a leader in Al-Qaeda who was likely to have knowledge of future attacks against the U.S. He was captured and transferred to multiple detention sites, one of them believed to be in Poland. However, the CIA nor the government of Poland has ever um, formally acknowledged that they worked together in the early 2000s, but this information has been discussed in unofficial sources. Um, Zubeda was subjected to enhanced interrogation techniques, which includes over 80 waterboarding sessions, cramped confinement, and sleep deprivation. Two former CIA contractors uh, subjected him to these techniques, and he, uh, Zubeda is currently at Guantanamo Bay, and he has asked for permission to serve the two former CIA contractors with subpoenas requesting information regarding his detention facility, uh, regarding the detention facility in Poland and his treatment there. And just as a little sub-note, uh, 12 of the, of the 13 documents request information about treatment in Poland specifically. Um, so that fact will be important in the analysis later on. Um, so Zubeda's main argument is that he alleges that he was subjected to enhanced interrogation techniques, um, and he's filing a discovery application in federal district court um, seeking to subpoena the two former contractors um, to get information about his treatment in Poland. Um, and the government is arguing that the disclosure of this information would threaten national security, and they're invoking the state secrets privilege, um, which would allow them to uh, keep the, the, the discovery application from going forward. Um, so the procedural posture is that the district court dismissed Zubeda's discovery application. They rejected the government's claim that the location of the site would threaten national security. However, um, they said that the state secrets privilege applied to operational details concerning the CIA's cooperation with foreign governments, um, and that meaningful discovery could not proceed without meaningful, uh, sorry, meaningful discovery could not proceed without um, threatening national security. Um, on appeal, the Ninth Circuit uh, ruled that the, that the district court um, erred when it dismissed the case. Uh, it said that the state secrets privilege did not apply to information that was already publicly known, and it viewed the former contractors as private parties, not as government agents. So anything that they confirmed or denied would not be an official confirmation or denial by the government itself. And the appellate court said that, said that three categories of information were not privileged. The first was the fact that the CIA operated a detention facility in Poland in the early 2000s, the second, information about the use of interrogation techniques and the conditions of confinement, confinements in that detention facility. And the third category is uh, details of Zubeda's treatment there. And the rule that's used in this case by the justices comes from a, a case from the 50s called United States v. Reynolds. Um, this is also a controversial case that I'll, I'll link uh, a Wikipedia article in the description below if you'd like to take a look. Um, there's, as you'll see, there's differing opinions on how to apply the rule um, to the facts of the case, and there's even some disagreement as to how to even formulate the rule from the case. Um, so I'll quickly recite how the majority, uh, or how Justice Breyer, rather, uh, stated the rule here. So here it is. The state secrets privilege permits the government to prevent disclosure of information when that disclosure would harm national security interests. To assert the privilege, the government must submit to the court a formal claim of privilege lodged by the head of the department which has control over the matter. The court itself must determine whether the circumstances are appropriate for the claim of privilege. However, in making that determination, a court should exercise its traditional reluctance to intrude upon the authority of the executive in military and national security affairs. 
If the government has offered a valid reason for invoking the privilege, the showing of necessity by the party seeking disclosure of the ostensibly privileged information will determine how far the court should probe in satisfying itself that the occasion for invoking the privilege is appropriate. Um, so this is essentially a, a case about the separation of powers between the executive and the judicial branch. Um, so since the executive is in charge of you know military matters and uh, foreign affairs, they, they can invoke the state secrets privilege. However, um, there is a check from the, on the executive from the judicial branch uh, where they can determine whether the state secrets uh, privilege is appropriate um, for a certain case. So that's what's happening here. Um, the main issue in this case is whether the existence or non-existence of a CIA detention facility in Poland falls within the scope of the state secrets privilege. Um, and the majority held that yes, the existence or non-existence of a CIA detention facility in Poland does fall within the state secrets privilege. Um, so We'll get into the first uh, opinion here. Justice Breyer delivered the opinion uh, of the court. And so the first point in his analysis is that um, since 12 of the 13 documents discuss his treatment in Poland, any response by the uh, former contractors would confirm or deny the existence of the site in Poland. So even though Zubeda um, is mainly uh, seeking information about what his treatment was at the facility, um, since the documents are stating that he's asking for treatment, he's asking about information from about his treatment at the Poland facility, any information given would confirm or deny that there was uh, a detention facility in Poland. I hope I said that uh, accurately. Uh, so uh, he agrees with the government that acknowledging a confidential relationship between the CIA and former intelligence service could damage um, clandestine relationships in the future. Um, and he believes that the government met its burden to show that the privilege applies here. So that's the first point. Um, a second point he makes is an analogy with the uh, Freedom of Information Act uh, doctrine. Um, he acknowledges that it's not a perfect analogy, but he says, in the Freedom of Information Act, the state secrets privilege does not apply if information is public and the ag agency has officially acknowledged it. Um, and so since, since none of the information here has been officially acknowledged, um, the state secrets privilege can be applied here. Um, a third point he makes is that disclosures from former contractors uh, would be equivalent to the U.S. confirming or denying that there was a detention facility in Poland. Um, they worked directly with the CIA, and it was alleged that they devised and implemented the CIA's enhanced interrogation program. Um, and the CIA director uh, declared that there would be harm from the contractors' responses themselves, um, not any response from, from anyone else. Uh, the fourth point that Justice Breyer makes is that Zubeda's need is not great, um, so he did not seek confirmation of the location as much as uh, what occurred in the detention facility. Um, so the need of uh, the location of the facility is not uh, as important. Um, he believes that the case should be dismissed because the litigation cannot survive the government's successful privilege claim. Um, the privileged evidence will endanger national security. Um, public availability of the information um, diminishes his need for the discovery. Uh, and there's judicial, to judicial tools like protective orders and um, using code names in court. So for example, instead of saying, you know, the detention facility in Poland, they can say site blue or site red or something like that um, to hide the identity or to hide the location of facilities. Um, but he believes that using the tools, even with the tools that they would, um, it would still tend to confirm or deny whether the CIA operated in Poland just because of the nature of the discovery application. Um, and since this is purely an evidentiary proceeding um, where discovery requests are the sole object, um, the case should be dismissed, is his argument. Uh, as we'll see later, some of the other justices don't believe it should be dismissed. Um, they think it can go forward, um, even if there's privileged information that must be left out. So I, 
I tried my best to get Justice Breyer's uh, main arguments there. The next opinion is from Justice Thomas, with whom Justice Alito joins, concurring in part and concurring in the judgment. Um, so the first point is that Zubeda's dubious dean for discovery he seeks requires dismissal of his application, regardless of the government's reasons for evoking the state secrets privilege. So Justice Thomas believes that the uh, that Justice Breyer inverted the Reynolds test. So the the rule that they used. Um, so Justice Breyer first asked whether the government has offered a valid reason for invoking the privilege, and then he asked whether the requesting party has demonstrated sufficient need. Whereas Justice Thomas thinks that um, the requesting party demonstrating sufficient need should be first, and then. Um, you can look at whether the government has offered a valid reason for invoking the privilege. Um, so he believes that the first uh, part of the test hasn't ha has failed here. Um, so he offers three reasons why Zubeda failed to prove any non-trivial need for the requested discovery. The first is that um, the information will not be used in a case that can offer him any meaningful relief from the federal government. Um, he hasn't asserted a right to federal relief. This is mainly information to help litigation in Poland. And the court has never held that uh, an individual's desire to litigate a foreign case establishes any need under Reynolds. The second reason is that Zubeda failed to, to uh, pursue an available alternative before demanding state secrets. Um, so after the case started, the government said that Zubeda could... Uh, offer testimony that could substitute for discovery. Um, and so he could essentially send a letter from Guantanamo Bay um, to be used as testimony about his treatment allegedly in Poland. Um, and the third point is that Zubeda has already um, essentially admitted that he has the main facts that he believes are necessary for the Polish litigation. Um, the main reason he wants discovery here is to supplement uh, a foreign investigation. And so using the word supplement um, made Justice Thomas believe that that's not enough to overcome the state secrets privilege. And so Justice Thomas would hold that uh, Zubeda demonstrated a dubious showing of necessity. And just on that fact alone, um, dismissal of the discovery application is required. The next opinion is from Justice Kavanaugh with whom Justice Barrett joins, concurring in part. Um, he agrees, but he states the rule from Reynolds in a different way. So I'll quickly uh, go through the way Justice Kavanaugh states the rule here. For the state secrets privilege to apply, the relevant government agency head must first assert the privilege. The court must then determine that the circumstances indicate a reasonable possibility that the state secrets are involved. So a reasonable possibility here is... Um, where he differs from the other statement of the rule. Um, that threshold judicial inquiry is not demanding because as our precedent in, in this case illustrate, those circumstances are typically self-evident when the executive branch asserts the state secrets privilege. At that point, the court must accept the executive branch's assertion of the privilege without further inquiry if the requester has shown only a dubious need for the requested information. Uh, so it's similar to the way the rule was stated before, however, as you can see, the, you know, even the formulation of the rule, the justices are kind of um, disagree as to how it should be stated. Um, Breyer never said anything about uh, circumstances indicating a reasonable possibility, nothing about threshold, judicial inquiry. Um, so that, that was my main takeaway from Justice Kavanaugh's opinion, was that there are different ways to interpret the rule in Reynolds. Next is the opinion by Justice Kagan, who concurred in part and dissented in part. Get a quick drink of water here. Um, so the government's main concern is about confirming uh, the location of the detention sites, whereas um, Zubeda also wants information about the way he was treated there. Um, so Justice Kagan believes that it's possible to segregate the location information from the treatment information and to allow ongoing discovery into the latter. Um, Justice Kagan believes that code names and other judicial tools can be used to conceal the identity, uh, rather conceal the location of the detention sites. 
Um, and since the discovery requests mention the word Poland out of you know 12 of the 13 documents, that can be rephrased in this case instead of having to dismiss the case and make a new one where the discovery application does not mention the word Poland. Um, Justice Kagan agrees that there are national security risks um, when you know in confirming the location of the site, but that this should not end the case. And Justice Kagan would remand the case to separate the privileged from unprivileged information and continue discovery. Um, next is the opinion by Justice Gorsuch, with whom Justice Sotomayor joins dissenting. Um, so the first point is that what Zubeda seeks is no longer a state secret since it's been made available through unofficial sources. Um, Justice Gorsuch believes that code names and other judicial tools can be used to protect the location of detention sites. Uh, he believes the main disagreement between the majority and the dissent is about how the principles should apply to the specific discovery requests Zubeda has made in this litigation. So how to apply the rule um, from Reynolds. Um, some dispositive facts are that the location of the detention site has been acknowledged by the former Polish president. It's been investigated by the Council of Europe and proven beyond a reasonable, beyond a reasonable doubt to the European Court of Human Rights that, that there was a detention site in Poland. Um, the government has the burden of proof to show how this will endanger national security. However, Justice Breyer essentially reversed the burden of proof. So it started with the government's conclusory assertion that you know that uh, uh, the state secrets privilege and then put the burden on Zubeda to disprove um, to, to disprove that it would harm national security um, so Justice Gorsuch believes the burden of proof has been flipped um, a court now fully satisfied by the government's showing of harm has a duty to inquire further and he would have at least remanded to the district court um, for in-camera review, which is where a judge privately looks at information to decide if it is a valid state secret or not. Um, so he essentially believes that judiciary should have more power here when it comes to deciding whether the state secret's privilege applies. Um, so instead of just um, looking at the circumstances and what the government offers as evidence, uh, he believes that in-camera in camera review is appropriate where the judge can actually look at the evidence um, for, for himself or herself to decide whether it applies. So it's basically taking the decision out of the executive's hands and putting it in the judge's hands, I, I believe. Um, the fact that the contractors might accidentally disclose privileged information in the discovery process is not enough to invoke the state secrets doctrine. Um, as I said before, there's processes to protect that sensitive information through the, through the discovery um, process. Um, the plurality confuses appropriate deference to the executive's predictive judgments about foreign affairs with inappropriate deference to the executive's concerns about its own mishaps, misstatements, and mistakes. So the dissent is um, pretty much insinuating that this is more of you know uh, the government trying to hide embarrassing things from the past as opposed to validly invoking the state secrets privilege. Um, he believes that the government has not carried the burden of proof and for its entitlement to the privilege. It hasn't shown how confirming the site would harm national security and it has not shown how the lawsuit would require it to confirm the location of the det detention site. Um, essentially like the previous arguments about how you can separate the privileged and non-privileged information. Um, so yeah, recently the government said it would allow Zubeda to mail a document to Polish prosecutors detailing his treatment, um, and this was the reason why the plurality said his need for evidence may, de may be diminished in the future. However, he notes that the document can be subjected to a security review. So it's not, um, the information that will be released, uh, you know, he may not even be able to release that much information from his letter from Guantanamo Bay. So that might affect the need for the discovery application to go forward. Um, and lastly, he thinks that this case is not about whether or not, you know, confirming Poland as a detention site is important. It's not about um, whether Zubeda is free to testify about his experience at the site. 
And it's not about fears um, about courts being unable to apply tools to disaggregate discovery regarding some issues from others. What he really thinks this case is about is um, that the you know they want to dismiss this case to impede the Polish criminal investigation and avoid or or delay further embarrassment for past misdeeds from the government. Um, so that's the end of the dissent. I did my very best to try to formulate the arguments. Um, I see the minute that the video's gone on 20 minutes here. So I'll link the opinion below, and I also will link uh, the Reynolds Wikipedia article below. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next opinion. Thanks.